First home game of the season in Newman Arena for Cornell, and it was no easy task taking on the Seton Hall Pirates from the Big East. The Knights started out in a celebratory fashion for Cornell as they raised their second straight championship banner. It's a game action now. It's Jeff Foote showing why he's the reigning Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year. Other end of the ball, Cornell getting it going offensively with this Chris Robleski three-pointer. Cornell opened the game on an 8-0 run. That run was capped right here with Lewis Dale to Ryan Whitman for this three-pointer. Whitman showing how dangerous he is offensively, and that led to a timeout by Bobby Gonzalez. When you're on the road and you haven't scored yet and the crowd is going crazy, you know, as a coach, you feel like you may never score. Fortunately for Bobby Gonzalez, he had Jordan Theodore on the bench waiting for his chance. Here's Theodore scoring two of his 13 first half points. Later in the half, it's Theodore again showing his versatility, knocking the ball loose and going the length of the floor. For the bucket, he had 20 in the game. But it was far from a one-man show for Seton Hall. They have junior guard Jeremy Hazell working on Jeffries here, dribbling into the corner, knocking down the three-pointer. He had plenty of tough shots tonight with a game-high 33 points. Hazell again driving the lane with just under five minutes to go, hits the bucket, putting Seton Hall up eight. The story of the game for Seton Hall was second chance points. The Pirates had 18 of them and 19 offensive rebounds. Robert Mitchell cleaning up the mess right here. He had a double-double. The Cornell did not go quietly, able to make a late run of their own. Here's Ryan Whitman driving, showing he's just not a three-point threat. Seton Hall holding for the last shot, and it's unlikely candidate Herb Pope hitting just his third collegiate three-pointer and putting Seton Hall up five at the break. We resume action in the second half, where Cornell had all types of problems early. Seton Hall taking the Robleski miss the other way, Jeremy Hazell with the easy bucket, and the foul. Hazell continued to silence the sellout crowd at Newman Arena. Time and time again, he was 12 of 25 from the field. One of those 12 is right here on a pass from Jordan Theodore to Zell, shooting over Robleski for the three. He said he felt like he was throwing a pebble in the ocean all game. Cornell continued to dig themselves a hole offensively as they could just not knock down shots. First, it's Jeff Reeves with the miss. Alex Tyler able to tip it out. But Ryan Woodman passes up the shot, fine for Robleski, but he's off the mark. Cornell shot under 40% in the second half. More second chance opportunities for the Pirates as Jeremy Hazell is able to capitalize here, putting Seton Hall up by as much as 16. Cornell again would not go quietly. It's Robleski leading the push, going coast to coast for the bucket and the foul, cutting the Pirate lead to just seven with a minute 18 to go. Ryan Whitman doing his part as he gets the pass from Chris Robleski and knocks down the three. He had a team high 24. But in the end, it was just too much Seton Hall and too much Jeremy Hazell. Seton Hall went on to get the 89-79 victory over Cornell, ending the Red their first loss of the season. You're getting a team that really wants to win uh, and respects you. I mean, I just thought Seton Hall was ready for us. I thought we were ready to play. I thought it was a hard-fought game. Um, I think it's just a statement about our program that they care that much to come up here and prepare and play hard and locked in. Um, well, just say that, you know, this was uh, – this was a great win for us. I mean, you know, we talked about coming up here and stopping their 22 home game winning streak. Uh, we know how good of a team they are, you know, beating Alabama and UMass on the road. The experience they have, uh, you know, winning back-to-back -back Ivy League titles. Coming up here, a Big East team uh, would never come up here and play Cornell, knowing how good they are. I mean, I've talked to some people on the phone this week that told me, you know, they might be one of the best Ivy League teams that have come around in 15, 20 years. And uh, we, we took a chance. We wanted to come up here, show what we're about. And we came in here, we stopped a 22-game winning streak, and that feel good for us. So um, we, just, we just got pride. Our, our guys, we come out, we play hard every game, in and out, no matter where we, who we playing. And uh, it shows you today that um, we'll be a tough team to handle down the road. I think we controlled the game from beginning to end. Um, you know, we had four guys in double figures. Jeremy was off the charts, 33 points. Yeah, we knew he was a very good scorer. He's a guy who takes a lot of hard shots. You look at his numbers, he takes a lot of hard shots. He made them tonight. I mean, what Jeremy did out there was remarkable. I mean, he, he just put on a remarkable shooting display. You know, there are a couple moments there in the second half where if we can hit a couple shots, if we don't turn the ball over, if we can score and get a stop, we really make it a, a much tougher game for them. They're, on, they're back on their heels a little more. Unfortunately, we couldn't make those plays. We only had eight turnovers. We out-rebounded them. We shot seven for 17 from the three, and we just guarded 
the three-point line like the world was going to end, but it shows how good they are because they still made 11 threes. I mean, they're, they're one of the best three-point shooting teams I think I've ever seen in my coaching lifetime. We're disappointed. You know, we know we didn't play our best game. Uh, and part of this is learning, and I told them if we win or lose, we got to learn from this. We're going to see the same type of stuff a lot more this season. We're going we're to learn from it. We're going to react better, and we're going to play better next time. Despite the tough loss, there are some positives that can be taken from this game. Chris Robleski, who struggled offensively in the first two games with the Red, poured in a season-high 22 points. The Reds' tough non-conference schedule continues Tuesday night when they will face another Big East powerhouse in Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. Reporting live from outside Newman Arena, I'm Jake Massbaum, Slope TV.